Hello. Welcome to Wine and Wisdom. We are the final session of Series 1 for our Wine and Wisdom sessions. Uh, the whole idea was that I'm having a virtual silly season with you because I can't be there uh, with you officially to be at your events. Um, we thought that uh, being together virtually online uh, during November um, would be a wonderful way for us to get together, share some wisdom uh, with everybody and uh, that's what we've done. So tonight is our last night of series one as I said and we'll be kicking this off again um, in the new year. But I wanted to let you know what I'm enjoying tonight for um, a glass of wine is a Chardonnay because um, I love them. Uh, from a Rowley Vineyard in Orange and uh, earlier this year I went on the food train and I can't tell you it was m one of the most amazing weekends and um, at the end of this at the end of this call uh, Facebook live I'd love you to, to google food train orange and just see how remarkable it is but tonight is all about how you can survive the work Christmas party you know, there are so many events during December which we're about to clock into and uh, it, it can be a lot of fun, stacks of fun in fact, but it can also impact us at work the next day quite a bit. Our, our productivity declines, we feel just not energetic at all. In fact, our focus and concentration feels a little dull. We make errors, we make silly mistakes, um, all of this just because uh, we've been burning the candle at both ends. So I wanted to talk to you tonight about the strategies I've got that you can put in place before you go to a work Christmas party, while you're at the work Christmas party, and once you get home, just to make sure that you do not fall into this complete slump <laughs> during December because there's usually really tight deadlines that you've got to complete prior to going on holidays. So we want to make sure you're maximizing your time at work and getting things done in less time with fewer mistakes so you can get home on time and enjoy life. How does that sound? <laughs> uh, if you have any specific questions, oh, hello, Alana, lovely to see you. I know you have stacks of Christmas parties, so I'm hoping that you will be able to extract something, at least one thing tonight uh, that will help you manage all the parties that I know you get invited to, lucky girl. Um, all right, so before you even go to the Christmas party, uh, firstly, you've got to just think it's December. It is what it is. So, you know, kind of give in to that. Don't beat yourself up that things are going to be a little different. You're going to be out of routine. Uh, you're going to be eating and drinking probably more than you normally would. Um, just give into it a little bit and relax, enjoy it, but be very strategic about the other things you put in place. And that's what I want to give you tonight. But first of all, it's just that kind of letting go with it. So on the lead up to the night, um, because you know that when you get to these events, you know, food and wine is flowing, it's very hard to manage temptation and uh, so that the reason for, um, you know, kind of getting that in your head is to understand that you can then eat a little lighter j during the day in the lead up. You know, don't have huge breakfast and huge lunch, then go out for your event and have more. So that's number two. And thirdly, before you go, you know, if you know that getting there hungry is <laughs> just going to, you know, make everything a problem, which of course it is when you turn up to an event and there's this massive buffet table with all these goodies tempting you to consume, um, it's just a disaster. So you've got to make sure that you are not starving when you get there. So either before you go, have a glass of milk, uh, have a protein smoothie, just have a bit of a snack, have some carrot and hummus, just something so you're not ravenous when you arrive and then just like, you know, head down into the, in the buffet and you don't see the light of day. So that's before you go. Once you get there, and I, this is really important because I think 
um, you know, we say yes to so many things because we feel like we should. It's December. Oh, it's a party. I might go. <laughs> Sounds great. But, you know, there is quality over quantity. So the overarching theme for this is to choose quality over quantity. That includes the drinks you have, the food you consume, the people you speak with, and the parties you say yes to. That's the overarching theme, quality over quantity. Because, you know, when you think about, usually there's, first of all, comes out with all these canapes. Now, four to five canapes equates to one main meal. So when they're coming around, it's just, you know, you, you take one, you take another, you take another. Before you know it, you have had two or three main meals before you even get to that grazing table or the buffet table. So just be very mindful of that. Again, free-flowing alcohol, they're just topping up your glass the whole time. Sounds fantastic at the time. Have been prone to have a few too many of those in my lifetime. But the thing is, when you do that, the next day, you just you cannot be on fire when you've got a foggy, hangover brain. So just manage it. Yeah, enjoy it, if especially if they got French champagne flowing. <laughs> enjoy it. But have a glass of water between each glass of that you of alcohol that you have, whether that's a still water, whether that's a sparkling one, but just have a glass of water. That will make a huge difference to your hydration on the night. It'll make a huge difference for your ability to be able to get to sleep because that then becomes an issue when you've had too much to eat and drink, you can't sleep, you wake up sleep deprived, that's problematic for your performance the next day. And it will also just help you with your uh, performance the next day because you're not so dehydrated. And of course, if you are actually entertaining at home rather than going out, make sure you're including lots of delicious and nutritious things that nourish the body. So yeah, hummus with veggie sticks, uh, prawns, smoked salmon, oysters, especially here in Australia where this time of year the sun is shining, it's warm. You can, you know, seafood is such a, a perfect choice to have while you're entertaining. And yeah, um, barbecue lean meats with uh, barbecue uh, vegetables. There are so many ways to entertain that is really uh, nutritious and, and nourishing for the body without just draining you of, sapping you of energy, which, you know, uh, um, over-processed, junky kind of food will do. So that is for during the event. Now, the third, the third one is what do you do after event to help the next day so you are more productive and can perform at work. Firstly, have a big glass of water before you go to bed. That's really important to have that big glass of water so that you are again just that extra bit of hydration will help you sleep. Sleep um, optimizes your uh, performance. Uh, the first Wine and Wisdom session we did in this series was all about sleep. So if you struggle with that, please go back um, and have a listen because we had some real gold nuggets there that people were sharing and some links to um, other information. Oh, I should just say that, I mean, I've got a couple of questions that people have sent to me, but if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box. I know a lot of people watch this after it's live because this is not the perfect time for everybody. And if that is you and you're watching it later, please also put your question in and I will come back to it and watch um, and, and, re and reply to your, your question, I promise. So the next thing is, if you have accidentally had one too many glasses of wine or champagne or beer, whatever takes your fancy, if you've just accidentally had one too many and you have woken up the next day, hello Marnie, nice to see you, you've woken up the next day uh, feeling a little dusty, which can happen in December <laughs> and February and June, but especially December, if that happens, I know it's really easy to hit snooze, close your eyes and like wait until the last little moment for you to get up and get out of bed. But if you can just make yourself get up, you don't have to go and do something full out, but go for a gentle walk. 
if you're lucky enough to live near the ocean, oh, dive into the seawater because that will just make such a difference all day. But if you can just move your body in the morning, even when you're feeling dusty, your work day is going to make um, be so much better. And the last one for uh, this kind of after event time is, you know, if you have overindulged in food, in alcohol on the night, don't stress out about it. Just compensate for it the next few days. You know, eat a little lighter. Have some alcohol-free days. That's okay. Don't beat yourself up. It's a fun time of year. It's Christmas. It's a festive season. You should be festive, but just balance it out. Because not only uh, does performance obviously reduce if you uh, are not feeling on fire the next day, but it's a, a time of year that um, the centimeters start stacking on around the waist because we are more likely to reduce our exercise. We are more likely not to sleep as well. And this leads to yeah, the extra centimetres and it leads to feeling a little more stressed at work, not being able to manage difficult conversations, um, not feeling optimistic and energetic. And if you struggle a little bit with how uh, mentally healthy you feel every day, uh, the kind of after effects of Christmas parties uh, fuel that fire and not in a good way. So you know you, um, put in a plan, make sure that you think about how you're going to manage the whole event before, during and after, some tips here. Uh, I've actually written a blog uh, about this with some a whole lot of other things that you might find are more specific to your life and I'm going to put the link to that in the comments. Um, but please send any questions to me that you may have around this topic. I know Kathy um, from my video last night, uh, my live last night when I said this was going to be our topic, she said to me she really struggles with remembering people's names at Christmas parties. And um, I don't know if anybody uh, on, on the call or maybe later on the call has any thoughts on how to do that. It is certainly something that I do not do so well. I know that you are the, the, the kind of strategy behind it is once you're introdu introduced to someone to say their name out loud immediately and that helps, Kathy. <laughs> um, but I have done that and it still goes out of my brain. So I'm not the best one to ask that but um, and maybe the wisdom from our community um, will either now give you a tip or a little later so perhaps come back to um, the comments a little later. Hopefully some other people will have it. But just to wrap up, we have some things you can do before before the event, um, especially the one about you know eat light, lightly that day and do not turn up starving, disaster ready to happen. There are strategies you can do on the night, especially remembering to um, have some water before your drinks and acknowledge that four to five canapes will equal one main meal. Keep that in mind. And then after the event to, you know, have the glass of water before you go to bed, get up the next morning, move that body in some way, some way, some form and um, compensate over the next few days. But again, I just want to go back to that overarching strategy. It's quality over quantity. Quality of food, quality of alcohol, quality of people and quality of events that you say yes to. It makes a huge difference because it is your life. You get to decide, you know, who's lucky enough to have you at your at their, their event. So be very smart about who you say yes to about attending their event. And once you get there, um, be very clever about um, what you're consuming. What happens if your wife makes you the designated driver all the time? Oh, thank you, yes, Ken. Um, <laughs> Funnily enough, we're next week about to celebrate 21 years of marriage. Who would have thought, especially since my dad dobbed him into the immigration department and he had to leave the country. 
but that's a whole other story. Um, and in those 21 years, I have never been the designated driver. I say that out loud. Um, it was part of our wedding vows that he always had to be the designated driver and that has continued to happen. How lucky am I? So <laughs> thank you very much. So for you, you have to definitely manage your alcohol, have water in between your drinks, Ken, so you can drive me home. Lovely to see you. Hello, Sarah. I know you're coming in and I know you get invited to a whole stack of parties. And um, we we're just talking about quality over quantity, Sarah, um, in regards to saying yes to parties and many other things. So uh, I know that you are the party girl and your life is so fabulous that I see, but quality over quantity. Anyway, thank you for joining me for series one of Wine and Wisdom. This is our, um, our, last, our last one for 2019. I will be starting this up again in 2020. Would love you to be involved. I'm going to do it a little later. I believe um, either 7.30 or 8 p.m. is a far better time for everyone. I'd love for you to let me know what is the best time um, for this and uh, what topics you might like in the new year. Uh, for me to start talking about. So thank you again. I really appreciated um, being with you for this virtual silly season. I hope you've got a glass of something. I've got this lovely orange sh um, Chardonnay from Orange, not an orange Chardonnay, um, and uh, going to have a lo lovely night. I hope you are too. See you soon.